right, we are now live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Quick to Politic, the social commentary and political podcast. I'm your host, Ernestine Lyons. Uh, I am a councilwoman in the city of Harper Woods. Uh, I also work with Build Institute uh, in small business development. Um, and I also work for the Michigan legislature um, as a community and policy liaison uh, under State Senator Adam Molier. So um, we are, I have the privilege and I am just so honored here to have um, the Honorable Mayor uh, Deidre Waterman of Pontiac. She is mayor of the city of Pontiac. And um, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. So tell That's us right. a little bit about yourself. Thank you for coming. It's really a pleasure to be with you, Councilwoman, especially for Women's History Month, uh, as we are in the sisterhood of women in the politics, political field. So thank you for the invite and uh, a welcome. thank you for welcoming all your um, members who watch on the podcast. Tell me about uh, what you would like me to say about myself. Um, I can start out by saying that you introduced me as the mayor of Pontiac. This is my second term. Uh, this is uh, kind of a second career for me. I never uh, was in the political realm until a few years ago. Um, before that, I was practicing as an ophthalmologist. That was my career. And I had a practice for some 30 years uh, doing eye surgery. And I had a patient uh, category that some of them would have been with me for 20 years and really enjoyed the profession. But I stepped up to the role of being mayor when some people asked me to run uh, for the city of Pontiac office uh, because they thought I had certain skill sets and certain things that Pontiac needed at a time of difficulty. And I brought a new perspective uh, to a vision as well as uh, the business acumen and the things that experience can teach you that I was able to bring to the office. So that's why I'm here and that's why I've been elected. And uh, on at the end of my second term now, actually will be, um, putting my head out in the ring to complete some projects we've done and running for a third term. Okay, so you are running for re-election. Okay, and I just I wanted to, to let folks know here that, you know, you were the first female um, elected to that role, is that correct? That's correct. I uh, broke that glass ceiling in Pontiac. I was first of the uh, women's strong mayors ever to be elected. So that was quite an honor. Okay, and that was another question that, um, you know, I didn't send that question over, but I, I wanted to know, like, what is the structure of the government in Pontiac? Um, is it, you know, city manager, um, strong mayor, but, you know, it's definitely great to know that. Um, so what is your, you know, connection to Pontiac? And like, what is it about Pontiac that made you want to, when people ask you that question, like, can you step up and run? We want you to see you because you have that experience, you know, what made you take that on? And, you know, what is so amazing that keeps you wanting to, you know, remain mayor of Pontiac and continue that mission? Well, Pontiac is a wonderful city. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we're here in the center of Oakland County. We're actually the county seat of Oakland County, connected, of course, to Detroit uh, and that whole um, northern Wayne County, a, a southern all the way to north Oakland County, uh, and that whole transportation hub that connects us through Woodward Avenue from the foot of Woodward Avenue in the uh, Detroit River all the way up to the Woodward Loop and Pontiac. So we are part of that continuum uh, that's representing that those communities that stretch from Detroit through the middle of Oakland County. So I've been in Pontiac for now some 45 years. Uh, I came to Pontiac uh, when I married a gentleman by the name of William Waterman, uh, a notable attorney in town, who uh, I began uh, knowing when I was in medical school I went to medical school in the Meharry in Nashville, Tennessee, but had been raised in Detroit. So I came back to Detroit to do my um, residency and internship after I finished medical school. And I met uh, William Waterman, who was with a law firm of very progressive young attorneys who established the first um, uh, major um, multi-attorney uh, black law firm in the city of Pontiac. And they were right in the middle of some very important uh, legal issues, including the desegregation of the Pontiac schools at that time, which made history because it was the first school district in the North 
uh, that was ruled on uh, needing to have desegregation because of de facto uh, segregation as opposed to de jure, which was in the Southern cities that had Jim Crow laws. Uh, and that case was decided by Damon Keith and uh, who I always respected as a jurist. And whenever I would run into Damon Keith, um, he would always kid me and he'd said, you know, it was your, first, your husband who made me famous. So that was something that he was never notable. And I came to Pawnee uh, right in the middle of all those trying times when he was right in the midst of solving this was a hero for the NAACP and quite uh, well known in Pontiac. And I was able to come and love the people, love the resilience, uh, get right involved with all of them. Uh, the human efforts that were going on here, um, education, uh, plans to improve our educational system, was able to grow my practice and was able to get uh, right involved with everything that's happening in Pontiac. So uh, we were so much committed to improving the community around us, uh, whether through the school or through the, um, uh, or through the other nonprofit agencies that we supported, that um, um, we just became a Pontiac family here. I had two children, a son and a daughter, Sean and Tucson, who are now doing very well. They're both out in California, but uh, they grew up through Pontiac. And um, we just established a home here, a love for the community, and continued to stay here to be part of the landscape for progress in this community. That that is really awesome, and you know, um, to to have that that sort of groundbreaking, being that progressive, you know, attorney, and then becoming that family, that that force for good, and to you know have that as you know something that you know was an example for you. I think that a lot of times power couples inform each other, and you know they shape each other. So um, that's that's just really amazing to to hear um, that that was your start and that was your introduction to you know, political life. Um, and so that, that sort of acts, you know, it points me into the next question, which is, um, what is your proudest accomplishment and some of your hopes and dreams for the community um, in Pontiac and the city government as a whole? My hope and dream for Pontiac is to uh, complete that narrative uh, and that greatness that is inherent in the city. As I said, this is a resilient city and has gone through some changes in narrative over time. Uh, I lived here through a number of times uh, in which we had uh, progress and good results. I've also uh, lived in some times when the city had troubles and was in turmoil. So you, once you commit yourself to um, a city, you're actually committing yourself to the people because you believe that there is a spirit of community here that you enjoy. It was a great place to raise my family, a great place to have a practice, a great place to support my husband in terms of his law practice, um, a community that received us and uh, honored us in so many ways um, in the way we were um, related to so many of the happenings here in the city. For example, uh, when my husband died, and it's hard to believe it's been eight, almost 18 years since he passed, but uh, he was so beloved and admired by the community for what he had done and what, what he stood for uh, that uh, they renamed our local courthouse, courthouse, the 50th District Court. And it was renamed by the city council on the petition of the people. So many people wanted this to have happen that uh, it's now called the Honorable William J. Waterman Hall of Justice. So this is such a tribute and uh, uh, to my husband and to the things that we as a couple, as a family stood for and that uh, we wrapped our arms around the Pontiac community as they wrapped their arms around us. And so uh, I never had any aspirations of ever running for political office. I knew uh, they tried to get my husband to run for mayor a number of times at troubled times for the city, but he always had such a love for the law that he wanted to stay as a judge. And I, of course, love my profession. Uh, I love doing eye surgery and I loved the fact that I was able to be of service and uh, provide that skill set to my patients. As I said, many of whom I became quite endeared to and they became endeared to the practice and, and were stayed loyal through all the time I was practicing. But at some point there was a time when I made a decision that uh, if I could offer something in service to the community uh, people believed I could do that, bring, bringing a fresh pers perspective, then I would do that. Uh, and so I did sacrifice um, 
to do that, gave up some income, uh, have to make sure that I uh, can weather all the politics that goes into a position like this, because politics can be a rough and tumble sport, uh, as you know. Oh, for sure. But the proudest things, the pro <laughs> as you know, um, but the proudest things is that we're able to make progress, uh, that I was able to bring the city together uh, at times when uh, we were very troubled financially. Uh, when they'd had an emergency manager for about 10 years when I came in and the people needed some way to restore hope, restore a plan uh, and to restore a vision. So one of the things I was good about was getting people together uh, and restoring some sense of cons consensus and getting people around a vision and getting the people to realize that one of the things we need to do in order to heal the city was to heal ourselves. You know, we could not, uh, we could not overcome the challenges if we had lack of confidence or if we were accepted. The narrative about finding, excuse me. <coughs> For example, I was uh, perturbed as well were many of the people in the community who were leaders and who supported my run for office, who didn't appreciate the fact that Pontiac uh, was considered a second weaker cousin uh, to the county, hmm. although we were the county seat. Mm -hmm. And they pictured Oakland County, one of the most prosperous counties in the country. All of Michigan. All right. So, so you, you talked about, you know, I love this quote of, you know, committing yourself to the people. And, you know, one of my uh, fellow council person uh, colleagues, you know, likes to say that she is a people-tician, not a politician. And I think that it's really important when you talk about like a legacy, you know, and coming in after such a turbulent time with the emergency manager to have that vision and to be able to heal yourselves and move forward. So that kind of brings me to the next question around, you know, what are some of your visions for, you know, you're running for reelection. What do you want to continue? What are those legacy projects that when people look back on your term, they'll say she created, she, you know, made us have, or she made us want to be X, Y, and Z. So what is your platform for, you know, the, the 2021 campaign? I look back on my campaign literature from four years ago, even eight years ago, the first election, to see the things that I thought were imperative and that were my pivotal points uh, for the people. And I like the phrase that your colleague said about being a people Uh I didn't think of that. That's kind of uh, very clever. Shout out but to Regina Washington, <laughs> if you're watching. <laughs> I there, Regina Washington. But uh, I, I've always said that we are in a service industry uh, in politics and the people who go about it for the right reason in the right way, always keep that in mind. That we work in the best interests of the citizens that we serve. And we work because we wanna make our communities better and because people put their faith and trust in us to be able to move that forward. So if that is the character and the sense of purpose um, by which you enter, that's always, the guiding force and lead you in making decisions because um, there will be a lot of decisions that are sometimes very difficult to make because there's good reasons on one side, good reasons on the other. There are people that it helps, people that it hurts, people that they don't understand. And so that's what being a leader is, even uh, having that sense of character and that sense of purpose that you're able to make those decisions and then build consensus around that and get people to follow that. So that's to talk about the proudest moments. One of the proudest things is to get people not only to believe in themselves again, um, you know, I kind of resented the fact when people said that uh, the heydays of the city of Pontiac, and I said, no, our heydays are not behind us. We just need to regroup. Um, uh, we can't look forward and back at the same time. Can't work, look through your rear view mirror and your uh, front visor at the same time. Uh, but we would be able to get a consensus plan, a consensus vision, and then move forward on that learn from the past, but not let it haunt us. So that's what we were able to do. Uh, and that's the sense that you have. Uh, and with that, uh, I had a particular um, mission to accomplish those four, five goals because that seemed to be the things that plagued the people most. I remember one of them was that 
during the emergency manager, we, uh, he had terminated all of the community centers. So we had four um, community centers that were uh, for our youth and those were all closed down. So I promised the population that, you know, the investment in our youth is one of the most important investments that a community can make. Uh, and so I would promise that I would restore that uh, a community center for our youth. Uh, and so we've done that and we've done that very wonderfully. I found a wonderful facility, have um, uh, offered programs now for our youth that are both uh, recreational so they can enjoy themselves, but also enrichment activities. And we've gotten a lot of partners who have brought in funding for us, us to be able to do that. So that was a great joy to be able to do that. <clears throat> We've also been able to do a number of things that I promised the public in terms of uh, taking care of our seniors. You know, very cherished members of our population, which was a rapidly growing sector of our population. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and so we have provided uh, two wonderful community centers and continue to provide other kinds of, I think, visionary ideas that um, help to improve the quality of our life for our seniors and help them to age in place as long as they can. <clears throat> so that was another thing that I set forward to do for the population. But one of the more important things and immediate needs at the time was to restore the city to financial stability. Uh, we were a city which was um, sinking like the Titanic, uh, we're flat broke uh, and hemorrhaging money. So first way we had to restore um, the faith of businesses to come into our community uh, we've been able to attract now a whole business community um, and uh, have diversified our economy. We're not dependent. We're very proud of our car history, but we're not dependent upon um, the car manufacturing. We're certainly post-manufacturing, post-industrial. So we were able to <clears throat> heal our economy, really grow and thrive, <laughs> grow and thrive. And we have done that. So now we are able to, uh, through our prudent financial planning, able to have a strong financial footing again. Uh, and I've been proud of the fact that uh, the last two or three years, we have had surplus budgets uh, that has able us to have some choices and options that we didn't have some years ago. I was able to settle some of the uh, litigation matters that had been left over from the emergency manager. Uh, one of those uh, has been a long time coming. We announced just this week uh, that there was a major um, uh, facility in the center of our town called the Phoenix Center. Uh, we were able to restore that, uh, not to lose that, like we lost the Silver Dome. Uh, we were able to find equity partners to come in to make that quite a uh, mammoth project now, which will be quite a catalyst for economic development. Uh, and also um, the hinge for some other, many other businesses, as I said, that are coming to town providing jobs. And that was also one of the things that needed to be done to stabilize the community. I wanted to empower our neighborhoods by uh, getting rid of the blight that had festered so many neighborhoods and pockmarked the city for years and years and years. And I thought uh, with council's help and using uh, a lot of federal block grant funds that we were able to commit ourselves to ridding ourselves once and for all for all these blighted structures. And now uh, it's proved the worth of that because where we were a crime-ridden city uh, 10 years ago, we have now reduce, reduced our violent crime levels uh, more than 40%, and that's pretty huge. That brings us into uh, harmony with all the other cities in Oakland County. So that was huge uh, to be able to do. Also very much been in support of our school district and education is so important and key. Uh, we have a lot for training now uh, to re retrain people for jobs or to retrain them for uh, jobs that are higher paying and have uh, more uh, future in them. So we've gotten a lot of programs and a lot of partners who helped us supply funding so we could do that as well. So those are some of the goals I set. And one of the proudest things is we've been able to achieve some of those goals. We still have more to go, more to achieve, but we have made great progress. And we've made great progress by the fact that we've been able to bring in the inclusiveness of so many people, stakeholders, supporters. Now the foundation uh, industry has come to town where we didn't have that support before. We've been able to attract that. So these are all things that were on the campaign literature. And as I said, it's not what you say, it's what you do. And so uh, that is a sense of accomplishment. 
that we can report. And that's the messaging that we take out to the citizens on their behalf. That is, that is amazing. And that is quite a lot of accomplishments for such a short period of time. And, you know, I'm actually really glad to hear that you, you, you do have a great vision for moving Pontiac forward and that, you know, you do have plans to, and that's, that's quite a lot. Um, you talked about, you know, um, just businesses, financial stability, and, you know, tying up some of those things that, you know, under emergency management, were still, you know, loose ends, and, you know, even education and things for the community, because, um, you know, I actually uh, have had a lot of interactions with the city of Pontiac um, through work that I do. Um, we had a lot of um, economic development work with the Pontiac Community Foundation, and I know they're yes. T. Ramsey and Associates. They're doing a lot of really great entrepreneurial work. Yes. Uh, and, yes. you know, I think that that's something that Pontiac you know, I think that in a, in a long time ago, it definitely had this sort of stigma, but I think that, you know, cities like Pontiac and like Detroit are on the rise. And, you know, I'm glad to hear that, you know, you do have a vision and that this is what you're running on. And, you know, it's not just because I'm mayor, but because we have to continue this work, you know, so, um, yeah, and uh, just out of curiosity, because here in the city of Harper Woods, we have, you know, Eastland Mall, which is, you know, it's had better days, it's still open, but, you know, when you talk about the Silver Dome, um, I, I just feel like it's, it's kind of fascinating that it was this amazing structure and, you know, so I just kind of wanted to know how did you guys kind of put together a plan for repurposing it and what are those plans for the Silver Dome? Because I think I want to learn what we can do as a city here with Eastland as you're looking at repurposing a, a massive, you know, uh, site of, of, of land. Well, Pontiac did have um, a great uh, history of repurposing uh, property in the city of Pontiac. Uh, and um, in fact, when I became mayor, we had the largest inventory of uh, no longer used General Motors plants anywhere in the world. So we set about working with Razor Trust uh, to find uh, ways to repurpose those properties. Uh, and through uh, establishing brownfields, through uh, offering novel solutions to courting uh, particular kinds of businesses to come in that could repurpose that land. And I'm happy to say that we have repurposed very successfully all but one small parking lot. All the rest of that is now in the form of some very novel uh, usages such as M1 Concourse, the car garage where we, uh, Motobella is coming this fall, uh, was once a General Motors plant. Uh, we had um, uh, United Shore, which is now the largest mortgage, wholesale mortgage company in the country, uh, moved here from um, Troy to occupy a former General Motors plant, beautiful piece of property, and has expanded tremendously while they've been here. So as far as the Silver Dome, uh, I must, uh, if you hope I'm not dis disillusioning you by telling you, the Silver Dome is no more. It's a grand old lady. It survived its time. Uh, actually, after the Lions and the um, Pistons had left, that it sat pretty much unused for a period of time. It, it passed to private ownership for a while, uh, but it was kind of in tattered and tears and we got the private owner finally to demolish it. Uh, we had what was called the final tailgate party and we demolished it. And it was kind of a, a remarkable, memorable uh, event. We thought we were gonna remember it because that was the last time we would seen the Silver Dome as it happened. Uh, and this was something that the demolition company uh, regretted uh, as it was published all over the world. But the first time they tried to demolish the first day, it didn't go down. There was just smoke and nothing else happened. So the next day, I think they tripled the dynamite. <laughs> it finally uh, went down. So I just made the joke that the Silver Tone was a grand old lady and it was kind of resilient and undestructible, just like the citizens of Pontiac. Uh, but the second time it went down and uh, that property, that 127 acres of prime property uh, is now the home to Amazon. We have a building as we speak, both a distribution center and a fulfillment center uh, that have been in construction now for the past year and a half. 
the distribution center and they're now delivering packages with all the Amazon vans there all over the county. And the fulfillment center will be delivering packages uh, by the end of July. So this is huge, huge in terms of being chosen as one of the sites to have an Amazon property, not one, but two. And this is the first time Amazon has ever built uh, facilities of that size on one piece of property. Right. So they love this property. We were able to lure them to Pontiac and we're proud of the fact because uh, when Amazon comes and some of the other businesses, that's kind of like the good housekeeping seal of approval oh, uh, to sure. the rest of the country, the rest of the world, that Pontiac is a good place to do business. So uh, that's the history of that. And uh, the, the Silver Dome is no more. Mm -hmm. And I did hear about like the, the roof collapsed in and then there was an implosion and then it didn't work and then they had to go back with more dynamite. So you, you hear about this because, you know, I remember just like the Pontiac Silverdome commercials and, you know, <laughs> about like how the sports were there and, you know, you always wonder like, okay, well, what's next? And, you know, um, now it's great to hear that there's, you know, jobs that are there uh, through Amazon and, uh, you know, that's, that's amazing. And hopefully, you know, Harper Woods, we can find that same sort of vision for, you know, the next phases of, you know, whatever happens with, you know, Eastland. And so, um, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for, for answering, you know, all of my questions and letting me pick your brain and, and telling, it was wonderful to, to hear your story and to hear you tell it and, you know, your, your future and the mission and the, you know, vision that you see for, you know, moving Pontiac forward. I do want to, you know, um, end with one final question on um, just Oakland County and, you know, Pontiac and the vision, because when you think of Oakland County, you think of prosperity. I mean, Pontiac um, and, you know, the, the cities that are all a part of Oakland County, they are definitely, you guys are the outliers for the entire state. You know, Oakland County is the wealthiest um, county in all of Michigan. And, yes. you know, so what is the relationship uh, with Pontiac and Oakland County? Because, you know, you do see that there are some disparities there. And we do know that there are things like the social determinants of health and, you know, uh, income disparities that play come into play. And so, you know, how do you guys mitigate some of these things that may be, you know, racial and socioeconomic, you know, with the whole county overall being prosperous and, you know, wanting to continue to have Pontiac lifted to those same heights? And I think that there has been a changing over the years, a relationship with um, Oakland County government. Uh, in the past, there was kind of a, a fractious, contentious relationship. As I came in, it was important for us to be part of the larger community. I thought Pontiac should not be an outlier. Uh, at one time, the uh, anonym for Pontiac was the hole in the donut, with the donut being the prosperous Oakland County around this uh, city of Pontiac. Uh, I rejected that notion. Um, Pontiac is a thriving, resilient, historic city that could build upon um, its assets. And so that's what we've done because uh, I presented the fact that we were considered a hole in anybody's donut. There were some problems that we had to resolve. We had to resolve the fact that we could not be a crime laden city. And so that was why it was important to restore that sense of safety and security. So we have done that a lot, um, brought in the Oakland County Sheriff and they've worked assiduously to work with the community to make sure that we have uh, justice, which was also a main determinant for mine equitable justice, um, rational policing. So that's what we've established in Pontiac that has helped uh, to change that narrative. But we want to be um, a, a destination city uh, that has its niche and we want to build community wealth. And that's one of the things that the visions and the strategies we have employed, uh, we have done that because the wealth of a community is the wealth of its citizens. And so whether that's um, restore, restoring and helping to improve and enhance our education system, offering more uh, opportunity for jobs and training, supporting businesses that brought in jobs, training, supported the community, um, or to just uh, make sure that we had a diverse culture that was stronger, that respected the humanness of everyone and built upon that and made this, this community stronger. Mm -hmm. So those are the things I think that are part of the community 
wealth building, mm -hmm. uh, the underlying for that. And as we continue to uh, offer other educational opportunities, um, I'm proud of the um, partnerships we've had with uh, the institutions of higher uh, learning, as well as the vocational institutions, as well as with the unions, who are helping to build and to retrain our populations who are looking for other career options. So those are all things in stabilizing the community. And I think that narrative that we once had about Pontiac uh, is no longer in people's minds now mm -hmm. uh, because every other day we're bringing in good news about how this community is progressing. And so I'm very happy that the citizens of Pontiac has put the trust in me to be the consensus builder and bringing people together. And I'm proud of all the many people, stakeholders who have answered the call in whatever way uh, to offer their services or their skills or their hours to the city of Pontiac, whether it's serving on a board or a commission or a task force or bringing it together or you know, helping to clean up our parks. Uh, we've restored that sense of a community that makes us strong, that makes us strong and makes us resilient. I love that. I love that. And especially the the aspect of building community wealth. Um, I'm not sure if you were part of the Michigan Municipal League's uh, capacity conference this this past week. Um, that was the overarching, you know, theme that we kept hearing, yes. you know, building community wealth. And I think that, you know, a community that has hope, as you mentioned, you know, at the top of the hour, it's like, you know, helping people kind of believe in themselves again and believe in the city, you know, is a wealthy community and is a wealthy city. So I think making sure that people know they have agency, that they can be a part of that change is really important too. So it has definitely been a pleasure speaking with you and, you know, um, let folks know if you, if you, you know, want to know where people can reach you or, you know, any, any way that they can contact you or ask questions or, you know, um, city council meetings or any new information you want to share, um, please do let us know um, where we can find out all that information. Well, you know how to reach me and uh, certainly I'm not hard to find because I am in the community. Uh, part of it always um, um, putting my hand out to see where uh, we can be of service um, or also just being informed about what is the needs and what are the wishes and what are the input of our citizens. Uh, my um, email is dwaterman at pontiac.mi.us. If anybody has questions about the things uh, that we brought up, we certainly invite you to some of the destination events that will be coming to the city uh, this year, both uh, Motorbella, uh, the replacement for the International North American Auto Show, as well as the American Speedway in the fall and plus the summer events. We have social distancing. We have a real downtown. I'm gonna bring some events and an art call here. So those are the things that I think people will recognize us for. Uh, but I do wanna give encouragement to you. Uh, I, I thank you so much for the uh, spirit that you bring to your position in office. Uh, when people of integrity and purpose and service uh, serve the community, that just increases the public's confidence in all of us for elected to serve. So thank you for that. And I'm glad you bring up the MML. That is a particular fondness of mine too. In fact, I'm the vice president of the MML this year, uh, Michigan Municipal League. So that is quite a theme, that community wealth building that has many, many uh, parameters that we're gonna be developing uh, and hope to share with communities that are part of that uh, consortium. So it's been wonderful to be with you. Um, the great audience out there I'm very inspired. Wish you well. Let me know if I can help you. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much. And thank you for the humbling comments. Um, it, I really appreciate those. And, you know, um, I just want to say that, you know, leading during a pandemic uh, is definitely hasn't been hard or hasn't been easy. Um, it's, it's definitely had its challenges. And, you know, I love being able to, you know, connect with leaders like yourself to, you know, just, uh, you know, talk about how we've been navigating it. And um, thank you so much for, for being a part of tonight's show. And um, thank you for all of you who are listening out there or watching. And this has been Quick to Politic. And thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you for having me on. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching on YouTube.